Welcome to the physical activity portion of the Jump Into Action training module. I'm Steve Ball. As Ann mentioned, nutrition plays a huge role in body weight, but so does physical activity, or in this case, inactivity. Did you know that obesity, childhood obesity, has tripled in the last 20 years? And children spend more time now watching TV than going to school. This is the first time in modern history that we can look at our young folks, fifth graders in this case, and say, hey guys, guess what? You're likely not to live as long as your parents. And a lot of that has to do with what we eat and how inactive we are and the obesity epidemic. Obesity tracks into adulthood. So what do I mean by that? Um, if you're obese as a youngster, you're more likely to be overweight or obese as an adult. Uh, from looking at this slide, if you look at the preschool kids, about a third of those kids that are obese um, become obese adults. But look at the, the, the next group up there, the school age kids. Half of obese school age kids become obese adults, and if it persists into adolescence, 80% of adolescents become obese adults. So it tracks into adulthood. There's also a strong relationship between body mass index, which is a measure of obesity, and inactivity. Um, there's lots of data showing that our least active boys and girls have higher body mass index or a higher level of obesity. Inactivity also tracks into adulthood. If you're inactive as a youngster, you're more likely to be inactive as an adult. So this is a critical time to intervene, to break the cycle. It makes sense that we would invest our funding, our time, in our young folks. And Jump Into Action is a program that can help break the cycle by helping kids um, increase their activity level. One of the things I want you to think about here for a second is I want you to think about your school. What are some of the things that you would see in your school? You probably see a library. You might see a media center. You might see things on the walls about art and history and math and science and English. Um, all of those things tell our, tell our young folks that we appreciate academics, that we value academics. But how much of the culture of your school also values physical activity, values healthy eating, values the health of our, of our students? And so Jump Into Action is the first step in helping you change the culture of your school to appreciate those types of things. Let's take a look at where kids accumulate physical activity. When I talk to parents about the obesity epidemic, you know, and, and ask them where they think we need to focus our efforts, most of them will say, well, we need to um, increase PE time. We need to double PE time. Let's actually look at some pedometer step count data from physical education there on the, the first um, bar there, PE. If you look at that, you see in about a 30 minute quality physical education lesson, kids are only getting about 1,500 step counts. If you look at the, the school day, kids are getting, you know, three to 4,000 steps a day. But then also look at the third part of the day, the outside of school component. That's where kids get most of their physical activity. So we don't want to just uh, bank all of our resources in phys physical education, that's an important place to start. And you'll see here in a second that Jump Into Action helps improve physical education through pedometer lessons. But we also try to increase physical activity throughout the school day. We try to um, get kids up and moving in the classroom. Um, we also improve what's going on in the playground. We zone the playground so kids can get more active. So the, the playground has particular zones where kids will um, have more structure. In a zoned playground, about 70% um, of the kids are actively engaged. In an unzoned or unsupervised playground, only about 30% of kids are actively engaged. And we also focus on the outside component of the, of the day um, by sending pedometers home, by doing some physical activity um, logging so that kids uh, increase physical activity outside of the classroom. We also try to involve the parents. So though, if you break the day into those three components, that's where we're going to focus our physical activity efforts. We're going to improve PE, we're going to increase school day activity, and also increase activity outside of the school. One of the things that I want to point out is that physical activity and physical fitness are two different things. Fitness is a product that can or, or in a lot of cases cannot be achieved. A lot of times it's genetically um, dependent. Physical activity is a process. It's something that all students can do. I want you to think back when you were in grade school and think about some of the fitness tests that you did. You might remember that you probably did a sit-up test. You might have done a push-up test. But you probably all did a mile run. 
And think about the kids that finished last in the mile run. Most of those kids were the heavy kids, the really out of shape kids. And what were you doing while they were finishing up? You were probably watching them, you were probably laughing at them, you were probably saying, come on Johnny, hurry up and finish so we can go play another game. That doesn't promote a love of physical activity. And most, um, the, the fitness movement, the fitness focus that we've had in physical education over the last 50, 60 years hasn't worked. We have more kids that are overweight than we've ever had. And so fitness, again, is a product that can't be achieved by all kids. Think about, think about your music teacher. Does she, is, she or he expect all of his or her students to be great musicians? Or the art teacher, do they expect all their students to be great artists? It doesn't matter how much I would practice drawing, I was never going to be a great artist. Well, all kids can't be great at fitness, but all kids can improve their physical activity levels, and that's what we try to do with Jump Into Action and the pedometer uh, program um, that comes with this program. And regular activity increases the probability of an active adult lifestyle. All youth have the capability to perform some type of activity. Not all youth have the ability to be great athletes or be great at fitness, but all kids can improve activity. And moderate activity offers health benefits similar to fitness. You know, most kids, most adults for that matter, don't like high intensity activity, which leads to fitness. We don't need to do that necessarily to increase um, the health of our students. Activity versus fitness helps those students who need it the most, the unskilled and the obese youth. So pedometers are a big part of this program. And we're going to go through some things that you can do in your school to, first of all, get pedometers in your school. We're going to tell you about what pedometers you need um, and tell you how to um, implement some of the lessons that the PE teacher will use and then eventually how you can get the pedometers to be used in the classroom and then at home. There are three things that pedometers in general measure. They measure activity time, so how long you were active. They can measure distance and they can measure step counts. Distance is the least accurate due to stride variations. Um, you know, shorter kids are going to, um, and, and longer leg kids, will, and stride variations taking shorter steps versus longer steps can really affect uh, the distance measurements. So that's not the best. We'll, we do use step counts and jump into action as one measure of physical activity. So we'll actually see how many steps a student would get for example, in PE, during the school day, outside of school. Um, but there's also variation in stride length there. The best measure is activity time because it's the most ac accurate and meaningful to kids and parents. Most activity recommendations are based on time. But with Jump Into Action, we'll use step counts and activity times. Kids will log those things. They'll track their, their counts and activity times, set goals, and try to improve. Why activity time? Why do we recommend activity time in conjunction with step counts? Because again, most recommendations are based on time. So kids need at least 60 minutes and that's a minimum a day of physical activity. There's the least variation between individuals. So how do we implement the pedometer activity unit? Um, it doesn't replace the normal physical education lessons. It overlays them. And so we're going to show you some of the simple lessons that you would do in physical education. And all the lessons are in our training manual, in our teacher's manual that Ann showed you earlier. And again, it's just an overlay. So we'll show you how to get the pedometers kind of in use. And then as kids come into your physical education classroom, they're going to be really good at using their pedometers so that you can track how much activity they're getting in a, in a regular lesson that you might teach. So what are some of the pedometer basics? So first thing I want to show you, and I hope you guys can see this, is this is a walk for life pedometer. If you get pedometers under the jump into action uh, label, you get these at a very big discount. And again, we're not, we're not making any money on this. This is um, a non-for-profit program. So this is a walk for life pedometer. This is the one that we've used in jump into action for years. I don't recommend that you go out to Walmart and try to buy uh, the cheapest pedometers that you can find because most of them aren't accurate, they don't last, they break, students pick up on the inaccuracies and they, they don't become a motivating tool. The Walk for Life pedometers that we use, that we recommend, are validated through research, that they're accurate and they last. Um, and again, you get these at a very big discount, more than 50% off if you buy them under the Jump Into Action umbrella. We've worked out a deal with Walk for Life and they've been very good to us. And so I'd recommend this particular pedometer. I'm gonna open it up here and show you a couple of the different things that it has in it. If you um, can see this, there's a yellow button and a gray button. And so the yellow button is a reset button. 
And so if you punch your button, if you have this pedometer with you, many of you may not, but when you get it, if you punch it, you can see nothing happens. You have to hold it down for a couple counts so that the pedometer resets. And that's a safety mechanism so that um, kids don't accidentally reset their pedometers. Now, what's this mode button over here, this gray button? That toggles between step counts and activity time. And so now it's on step counts, and I will see how many steps that you would take. And if I wanted to see how long I was active, you can go between the two. And so we're going to record both of those measures and set goals based on those things. If you were to shake your pedometer, you can feel and you can hear a little lever going in there. And what I usually have folks do is actually bring it up to their ear here. And in the vertical position, I'm going to take off the safety strap first. That's just a safety strap, so if you were to drop it off your belt, you're not going to lose it. But if you were to hold the pedometer here and shake it vertically up and down, you can hear and feel a lever going up and down. So that tells us a couple important things that First of all, the pedometer has to go up and down for it to record counts. And so it's important that we have it in that orientation. So I've actually, I actually already have one on my belt, and you can see that it's in that same orientation that I was shaking it. If I were to flip the pedometer horizontal like this and shake it, you won't hear or feel that lever. So it's important that it's in the vertical position where you might say, why would it ever be in the horizontal position? Well, you're going to have some students that they're going to have some body fat here, and that pedometer is going to be pushed out so it's more horizontal than vertical. And so one of the first lessons that we do is practice where is the most accurate spot on our body. In general, you want to have it in line on your belt. I've got this placed on my belt here in line with my knee. Um, and what we do is we take 100 steps. So when you get your pedometer, if you have a pedometer, you could pause the video and go do this now or later. But get your pedometer in line with your left or right knee. It doesn't matter which one. Reset the pedometer so it's on zero. Um, hold it down. Reset it. Close it up. I want you to take 100 steps in a straight line. So you're going to have to count. When you get to 100, you stop, open your pedometer up. For me, when I do this, it's always 99, 100, or 101. So it's a very accurate for me. On other folks, it might be off a few beats. For some folks that have some body fat here, or it's kind of spilling out, it might be way off. So you have to play around with it and figure out what's the most accurate spot for you. Maybe it's a little more to the left. Maybe it's a little more to the right. For some kids, it might even be on the back of the hip. And so you're going to do this step count 100 step counts several times until you get it in the most optimal place for your students. And that's actually one of the lessons that we do in physical education to begin with. So um, it has to be in this orientation. You've, I've showed you how to reset it and toggle between activity times. What are some of the other things um, that will help you implement the pedometer program? Well, one of the things that the PE teacher needs to do is number the pedometers. And so the pedometers are going to start in physical education. The, the PE teacher is going to number the pedometers with a permanent marker and assign a certain number to each student. And then put four or five in a little Tupperware bowl, a little container, and make four or five of those uh, stations around the activity area. So when students come to physical education, they go grab their, they know their pedometer number 16, they know it's against the back wall of the gym, and when they come into PE, the first thing they do is go grab their pedometer, they've learned how to put them on, they've learned the most accurate spot for them, and they realize really quickly, if they get there and put their pedometer on quickly and start moving around the area, that they accumulate steps. And kids get really efficient at this. And so that, that'll really help you by numbering your pedometers assigning a number to a student, and then placing them throughout the activity area. Um, some of the other lessons that we do with the, with the pedometers, like I said earlier, we do, uh, we'll determine a baseline activity count, and we actually have um, uh, some worksheets that help kids determine their, their baseline activity step counts. And so kids will record steps over several days and take an average to see how many steps they're getting, and then they're going to set a goal of increasing by 10 to 20 percent over the next two-week period. We already have worksheets developed um, to help you do that. So they're going to determine baseline step counts for PE. Then they're going to try to increase. They're going to log their activities um, in PE using these worksheets. And every day they're going to write them down, and then over a period of time you can have them go back and recalculate how many, how many steps they're getting now.
You can also do that during the school day or at home. So uh, goal setting is a big part of the pedometer jump into action program. So as I said, number your pedometers, assign them to a certain student. You'll explain what they measure. Um, do the, show them the reset and mode buttons. Let students, you know, one of the first things that, you know, after you're kind of explaining to them, you know, how to, how to reset and, and toggle between activity time, let them play around with them a little bit. Let them shake. Shake them and say, hey, look, if I shake this real fast, I get a bunch of step counts. That's okay at the beginning. But one of the mottos that we use is if you shake them, we take them. So after the first couple of days, there's a novelty phase, and kids will, you know, come up with some crazy numbers that they're actually um, getting because they are just shaking their pedometers. But after a couple of days, I would definitely implement that that rule: if you shake them, we take these things. This is a this is a very sophisticated um, device. You know, you can tell them that this is just like having a calculator. We have letters that you can send home to the parents that tell them about the pedometer program so that later in the semester when you actually check pedometers out to students that the parents know what's going on and that, that you'll return, that the students will uh, return the pedometers to school. But let them play around with them. Let them shake them. Um, teach them what it measures. It measures how many steps you're taking. It also measures um, how long you've been active. Okay, so what about the classroom teacher? So a lot of times, you know, we think about physical activity and we say, hey, that's the PE teacher's job. I'm a classroom teacher. I don't need to worry about getting kids up and moving. Well, you do, guys, because PE is not enough. We've cut back on PE time. Um, there's not enough activity that goes on uh, in PE to get the amount of activity that kids need to be truly healthy. So you, you definitely play a role in this. And I think that you'll find that if you implement the pedometer program as we've designed it, you'll be rewarded too. What you're going to do after the pedometer lessons have been implemented in physical education, the pedometers can actually come into the classroom. So when your student gets to your, to your classroom, they, have, they know their number 15 or 16 or whatever number you've assigned them. They come to the classroom, they put their pedometer on, they reset it, they wear it all day. And they keep track of how many steps they're getting throughout the school day and they're trying to set their own, they're going to set their own baseline, uh, they're going to determine their own baseline step counts and set their own goals and then try to increase on those goals throughout the school day. They can also wear them to physical education, and I would recommend that. And if you want to see how many steps they're getting only in PE, that integrates math into the curriculum. You know, again, a lot of the parts of Jump Into Action integrate other components uh, like, like math and science and social studies. So the pedometers are a great tool. I would definitely um, get the Walk for Life pedom pedometers if you can and make sure that you uh, implement this program as we've designed it. This classroom pedometer pro uh, protocol, teachers will have students wearing the pedometers throughout the school day. We have work worksheets that you can calculate your baseline step counts. What about the at-home use? Um, a lot of teachers are very hesitant to check pedometers out and let them leave the school premises. If you go back to that slide I showed you earlier, where kids accumulate activity, we're crazy if we don't focus on that part of the day because that's where we can really make a difference, where kids get a lot of activity is outside of school. And so what we suggest, and we've done this in other schools successfully, is that you check out four or five at a time. We, again, we have letters that go on to the parents talking about the program, so they're going to know what it is. Um, if you do a good job, you'll lose, on average, about 10% of your pedometers throughout the entire program. Um, some of them will break. You might, they might be dropped in the toilet. They might not be returned. But if you do a good job, only about 10% of your pedometers will be lost. Check the pedometers out to kids. Let them wear them home. Let them track how many steps they're getting throughout a 24-hour period over several days. Let them um, set goals and try to increase. You can also have teams of students. So you might have a team of three or four students that are going to sum their step counts over 24 hours against another team. We also recommend that you yourself wear a pedometer and that you can set up a competition with the other teachers. Students become really interested in how many steps uh, you as a teacher have and they will encourage you to get more steps. So be a role model, get a pedometer and wear it and track your own steps. Okay, so what about funding for pedometers? So, 
if you don't have a grant or something like that, you might say, hey, these pedometers are really expensive. There's no way that I'm ever going to be able to get these pedometers. Again, these Walk for Life pedometers, first of all, if you, if you sign up under Jump Into Action, you're going to get a significant di discount. If you were just to go to Walk for Life and buy these, these are about $24, $25 pedometer. You're going to get them for about $10 or even less if you, if, uh, through Jump Into Action. So you're getting a high quality pedometer at a really good discount. But you might say, hey, listen, even if I only have 30 kids in PE and we just want to start there, um, we have no way to get pedometers for every fifth grader, but we can at least do the pedometer lessons in physical education. How am I going to come up with $300? Um, well, here's some ideas for you guys. You know, there's always talk to your administrator and see if you can um, use some of the school budget to, to purchase pedometers. It's just like buying any, any other type of equipment for a school. You know, your, your PTA, PTO, parent teacher, uh, organizations is a great place to get some funding. There's a Walk for Life shareware program. This is through the Walk for Life company. They actually have a pedometer program that helps you raise money, money to buy pedometers. So we'll give you that website and show you where you can go to give you some ideas on how you can raise money through their program. Basically it's buying, buying pedometers and then, and then selling them. Uh, to raise money to, to buy more pedometers. You know, you could do something um, that Ann came up with was a great idea. Are you more active than a fifth grader? So it's a community challenge. Go to the community members and, and get, a, get a member to sign up a fifth grader by buying a pedometer for the fifth grader and the community member and have a, have a competition. See how many steps you're getting, see how many steps the, the fifth grader is getting. Donations and grants. Um, don't let not having funding for the pedometers be the, be the limiting factor for this program. In other words, don't say, we don't have this, so we can't do it. You can do it. And if not you, then who? So figure out a way to get a cohort of pedometers. Get yourself 30 or 40 pedometers. Start there. Build, up, build these up over, over a period of time, and you'll have a successful pedometer program. They're a great tool. Lots of you out there are using them already. You, school may even have pedometers. So. Again, a big part of the Jump Into Action program is the pedometer program. Thanks for watching the physical activity portion of Jump Into Action training module. 